What's up? Welcome back to the channel, to the penultimate episode of Project PB, and to race week, <laughs> which feels pretty terrifying actually. And here we go. But 16 weeks of hard work, of grinding, have all led up to this Sunday at the Loch Ness Marathon. Before we get into today's episode, a big thank you to you if you've supported this series. Thanks for all the well wishes this week as well. Really does mean a lot. I greatly appreciate all of them. Today, just out for my final little session, little race week session, two miles easy, probably going a little bit hard, shock. And then through by a mile, two of them at marathon pace, one and a half marathon pace, two miles cool down, and then that's it done. I'm ready to rock for Sunday. Now, you've seen loads across this series. Easy running, full weeks of running, sessions, me training and traveling. But who you haven't heard from is the man behind the training plan. So I thought to debrief the last 16 weeks and chat about Loch Ness and the goal. We speak to my coach, Jeff. And the next time I see you, hopefully we will have that new marathon PB. So we're into the penultimate episode of Project PB and I thought it was probably a good point uh, now to bring in the man behind the training plan. Um, Jethro has been my coach for the past 16 weeks um, and we're in race week, Jethro, which is pretty terrifying, I'm not going to lie. Um, just to start with, I, I guess probably introduce yourself and kind of give us a little bit of background to, to what you do and how you got to this point. Yeah, no, thank you, Ben. And um, it's, do you know, it's felt a like it actually felt a lot longer than sixteen weeks that we've been working <laughs> together, actually. Um, but yeah, so so my name is Jethro McGraw. Um, I uh, I'm a running coach, and um, Ben contact, contacts me through through New Levels, uh, which is the company that, that I work for. Um, my background as a coach has been one of transitioning from from an athlete to a coach athlete to to kind of a full-time coach, which is where I am at the moment. Um, and the majority of my work has been working with kind of um, sub-elite university athletes um, in and around the kind of Birmingham area, which is where I went to university and it's where I've stayed on um, afterwards and now got myself involved with, with the coaching there. Um, but yeah, um, it's, it's, been, it's been brilliant. I'm relatively new to new levels. It's been, um, been on board since the start of the year. It's been it's been it's been really good to work with different types of different profiles different profile of athletes. Um, so yeah, I can't believe we're on race uh, race week already. <laughs> it's one of those, isn't it? Because obviously you you work with athletes across all kind of abilities. Um, I guess speaking broadly, before we get into Loch Ness and the past sixteen weeks, do you approach? different abilities in different ways or do you kind of approach everyone in the same trajectory i think what well, you've got to you've got to approach everybody like an individual because it doesn't matter who they are or the type of profile or the, the times that they've ran or the, the things that they've done like everyone's still an individual they've got their own relative strengths own relative weaknesses um and so in terms of thinking about what they need from a training plan or a program then you know it is all individualized obviously there's there's certain things that i like having in that program and there's certain themes that you'll see doesn't matter whether you're somebody looking to do kind of middle distance races 5ks or somebody looking to, to target a marathon like there's similar types of sessions that i like to put, put in there because i think they really work in terms of then when we first met 16 weeks ago mm -hmm. um what were your and you can be as honest as you like here mate <laughs> what were your kind of i guess initial thoughts um to, to to the goal and to i guess my training history and what what i've done to this point well i, th I think you, you were quite an unusual athlete in terms of i've not worked with a lot like you which what became very clear was that because of your background or your way into running, which was via ultras, via trail running, via kind of you've done Ironmans in the past, I kind of 
you know, it, it immediately became obvious that when you're aiming for a marathon, the distance, the duration, grit wasn't going to be a problem, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, and actually, I think, I think there was definitely a, a big kind of gap in terms of your running experience doing a lot of pace underneath that marathon type effort. Um, so I think that was what initially I was quite motivated to uncover what might be there. And I think, I think you'll agree. I think you've probably been on a bit of a journey of discovery and working yeah. out maybe where your relative strengths are. And, you know, I know that you've got excited about after this marathon block going in and running a 10 K a five K and, and, and really kind of running big PBs over those distances as well. So I think obviously when you start working with an athlete anyway, the first four to six weeks are kind of a period of discovery and yeah, you can have an onboarding call and hear about what they've done to date, but ultimately it's a bit of trial and error and while you're trying to work each other out. Um, but in terms of initial strategy, it was get you money running more frequently, slowing the majority of your runs down, which was definitely like a challenge. And I think, I think it took a while for you to really realize the benefit of that. Um, but it meant that that week was more polarized and you could get more quality out of the sessions. And as soon as you saw that and you saw the quality sessions that you were able to complete pretty early on, I think it was a real kind of realization moment that, oh, actually, this is exa exactly where I need to be. And, you know, if I'm doing these sessions already four to six weeks in, where am I going to be uh, at the end of my block? So I don't know, would you say that's a fair, a fair yeah, I, I was just about to say, like, there, I know there are people that are following kind of this series that maybe are considering a coaching journey or considering speaking to new levels or, you know, whoever. But I would I would genuinely say this experience has been a hugely positive one. And obviously you've been a massive part of that. But also I think the discovery that I've made myself has been huge as well. And I think you've obviously helped facilitate that by programming what you've programmed by having the conversations we've had and I don't think that I would be in this position with, of confidence I guess it's probably the first time I've said that um without having this journey over the past 16 weeks because yeah there certainly has been like a lot of discovery on my part when it comes to okay that is why this is like this that is why this is like that and try and follow the plan to a T if you can, because everything has a reason. And I think in the past when I've trained for things, it's just been like, I need to get this amount of volume in, or if I need to get this amount of intensity in, or I need to get this amount of distance in, rather than it being, it needs to be programmed in a strategic way. And w when you when you kind of accept that things are programmed in a specific way for specific things and reasons then I think it becomes much more of a like a jigsaw puzzle rather than a direct line to to that end goal um, and like you said slowing down number one a big thing um, particularly on those easy runs because running everything around my old marathon pace just wasn't wasn't helping it wasn't doing anything and actually reflecting back on the block at Newport I think one of the main things I was doing is I was running a lot of you know quote-unquote dead miles that weren't really doing anything they were just kind of they were just kind of there because I thought I needed to be to be running extra mileage as a coach do it like are they are they are those sort of common mistakes that you see Definitely, you'll be you'll be you'll be pleased to know you're not you, you, you're <laughs> yeah. not the first one okay. to, to have that as as, a, as as not a problem, but uh, like an opportunity for refinement. You know, um, you're right. You, you probably your past sort of marathon block or training history has been that a lot of those runs are just probably just outside a marathon pace, and they're probably all quite hard. Not too much quality in there, and. Um, like, and generally as well, it just it just makes the week quite hard, <laughs> you know. Um, and hopefully, it's been, I'd say, it's been it's been a journey, and you've 
you've stuck to your task and you've worked hard when you need to work hard. It's not saying that everything needs to become easier. But, you know, there are sessions in there that are really hard and you've just got to get out. You've got to get after them with confidence and, and, and make sure that you're, you're running them in the right way. But it does allow those sort of recovery down days to, to, to be a lot more relaxing as well, which also therefore makes training a lot more sustainable. You know, yeah. I, it's really awesome that we come to race week already, but obviously I'm going to give you a bit of downtime after Loch Ness next weekend, but I don't, I don't feel like you're burnt out, you know, from this block. And I think it's, it's probably quite common that people do burn out because the training that they're doing isn't sustainable. And yes, I know that Loch Ness has been, a, is, is a, is a really big aim for you, but you know, you've got a lot more years with in, in, in the sport with, more exciting aims where for your long-term development you need that training to be sustainable and to be educational and um, yeah hopefully hopefully we come up with a new exciting aim post post lot less it's definitely nice not to think oh, i'm gonna go put on my trainers and flog myself every day <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's definitely nice because <laughs> you know that's I, d you d I don't know why but that was kind of my approach to everything for, for a long time it's just like go out and run as hard as they physically can i know we, we spoke before we came on air that i did a bit of a podcast with with lewis who's the founder of new levels last week and we spoke about kind of common mistakes that we see with a lot of runners and um quite often you do get runners and they're probably a little bit like yourself and you say what's the relative strength of yours and this and you say oh well look i can work really hard i can bury myself you know i know what it takes and I'm, you know i can really go after it and that is a fantastic quality on race day it's not necessarily the best quality week in week out and so that's what's exciting i know that you've got that in you and come the end of this week that's when we're going to empty the tank and, and, and see what you've got and that's what makes this week quite exciting a bit nervy but exciting <laughs> in terms of then things that surprised you and things maybe i guess on a on a good and a i wouldn't say a bad level but you know the the up level and the down level what, what were those things? Was there anything that kind of you thought, oh, well, I wasn't expecting that on either side of the of, of the coin? Good, good question. Um, so I think the, the two the two biggest things that surprised me in the most positive way was um, sort of how comfortable and consistent you were at operating around that 5K, 10K pace, which you don't have a lot of history in that area. And that, that seemed to come quite quickly and naturally to you. Um, and certainly the, the, the tempo sessions or the half marathon type pace sessions, again, I think you, you gained real confidence very quickly from them and you were able to nail them quite well. I think the surprising thing was that it was probably the, the longer marathon pace type efforts, which were a little bit tougher to get to, to start with. Um, and then also, I think just in terms of fueling, I know that's been another education piece through through the block where... Again, it's not been it's not been too formal, and obviously you've you've had you've had experiences in the past that are a bit more of an, in that ultra environment. So it's not like that nutritional fueling is, is is a massive new topic, but I think that's been refined, right? Um, and that's allowed you to get more out of yourself, particularly on those big session days where you know you, your body needs to be fully ready or fully primed um, to, to really make the most of uh, make, make the most of that session. So yeah, that's 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 the kind of the surprises and maybe, um, yeah, surprises both sides. But I feel like I'm pleased to report that the things that I was surprised that maybe you weren't as strong as, I don't feel like they're a weakness anymore. You know, I think we've really worked on them the last eight to ten weeks, and um, we, we, like I say, we're full of confidence that those 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 have been addressed. I suppose. With your coach's hat on, and not just talking to me, but talking to you know, whoever's watching this, what would you, what would be your like top race day tips, those things that you, you would tell your athletes as they go into race day? Because there is obviously going to be a few nerves. There's obviously a lot that's gone into it. How do you kind of settle them down a little bit? I think first thing to say, nerves are, nerves are normal and they are a superpower. You, you don't get, you don't get nerves training week in week out you do get it on race day and um, that extra boost of adrenaline is is important on race day i think i think the, the next biggest 
tip is is to, to go in to be, and be really clear about what you're trying to execute on race day. I think it's much easier to relax into a, a process, a plan, a strategy, rather than just going in blindly, feeling like you're going to empty the tank. I think it's more important in the longer distances where pacing is much more important. But equally, I, race, I, I coach guys that race 800 metres on the track, so literally two laps, and we still talk just as much around how they're going to pace that race um, to make, to get the most out of themselves. So I think by by taking away the pressure or the, the thoughts around what the outcome is going to be, if you, if you can put a lot of that energy into being quite methodical, coming up with a process, then again, you can relax and hopefully you've come up with a process with somebody that you trust, a coach, uh, like one of you know, another athlete that you train with, um, you know, if you if you believe in that, then it's ultimately going to carry you and, and get that outcome that, that you probably want at the end of it. I um I don't want to go into our strategy too much for Loch Ness, um, but sure. I will ask you quite a broad question about about it because I'm sure we'll, we'll we'll talk about this behind the scenes and then report back post race. Um, am I ready for Loch Ness? Do you think? You're absolutely ready for Loch Ness, um, and I'm, I'm excited for you. I think the, we obviously we'll have a conversation later this week around what we want to do strategy-wise. Um, but I think it won't be a surprise to you that a lot of the sessions that we've we've got done together have been progressive sessions, and so it probably won't surprise you that maybe a progress a progressive theme or a progressive strategy on Sunday might be the might be the one that. that we opt for. 